Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Technology can be cyclical at times, with new advances making it possible for ideas that once seemed obsolete to find new life. Perhaps the best example of this is the airship. First developed in the late 19th century, airships use large chambers filled with hydrogen or helium to create lift and navigate through the skies. By World War I, airships were being used for military purposes, including reconnaissance and bombing missions. However, they became extremely popular for commercial travel once the war ended. Then came the Hindenburg, a German airship measuring 245 meters long and powered by four diesel engines. In May of 1937, the Hindenburg was flying from Frankfurt, Germany to Lakehurst, New Jersey, when it caught fire and crashed. The disaster claimed the lives of 36 people and served as the end of the commercial airship era. Though the Hindenburg disaster is still referenced today when airships are mentioned, there is no denying the benefits these vehicles offer. Most notably, Airships can stay aloft for long periods of time, as their engines only need to generate thrust, not lift. The natural buoyancy of the gas does the rest. In the early 2000s, the US military began investigating the potential for a Long Endurance Multi-Intelligence Vehicle, or LEMV. The airship was intended to provide persistent intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance over a large area for up to 21 days at a time. The result was a hybrid airship, which utilizes both buoyant and aerodynamic lift. Developed by Northrop Grumman in conjunction with subcontractor Hybrid Air Vehicle, the LEMV completed its first flight in 2012, just a short distance away from where the Hindenburg caught fire. The initial LEMV prototype was 300 feet long, 80 feet wide, and 80 feet high. It was far more advanced than any 19th or 20th century dirigible with four diesel engines powering electric propellers at the rear and sides of the ship. As a surveillance vessel, the LEMV prototype also boasted advanced sensors and communications equipment, enabling it to provide situational awareness and intelligence to ground forces. Though the flight lasted just 90 minutes, the development team considered it a rousing success. Due to its hybrid flight style, the LEMV could not simply dock the way a traditional dirigible might. Instead, it needs to approach the landing area at a safe altitude and speed, ensuring the area beneath it is clear. It then touches down tail first, moving slightly forward rather than coming down vertically like a helicopter. Once contact with the ground is initiated, the front will touch down as well. Though successful, the LEMV program was ultimately canceled due to cost overruns and technical difficulties. 
Though the LEMV didn't ultimately work for the US military, the organization was not done evaluating the potential of airship technology. Also, in the early 2000s, the military partnered with Raytheon Technologies to develop the Joint Land Attack Cruise Missile Defense Elevated Netted Sensor System, or JLENS. Often referred to simply as a spy balloon, the JLENS is a tethered aerial detection system that can be used to identify and track cruise missiles and other airborne threats. The system uses tethered aerostats, or blimps, equipped with radar and other sensors to provide 360-degree coverage of a designated area. The J-Lens is much larger than most soldiers anticipate. With a mass of 7,000 pounds and a length of roughly 242 feet, it can be cumbersome to inflate and deploy. The process involves transporting the J-Lens to the launch site in sections, then assembling it on the ground. Once the airship begins to take shape, it can be filled with helium. As the J-Lens starts to take shape, a team of technicians enters the envelope and attaches the payload, which includes radar and other surveillance equipment. Once completed, the inflation process is finished and the blimp is slowly raised to its operational altitude, around 10,000 feet. Unlike previous designs, the J-Lens stays tethered to the ground the entire time. The J-Lens system is specifically designed as a sort of aerial radar system. Its powerful sensor suite can provide early warning of airborne threats to help defend against attacks on high-value targets, identifying and tracking everything from missiles to aircraft to other UAVs. Before the program was canceled, the U.S. military saw the system applicable during offensive operations. For instance, it might help guide interceptors to their targets, providing enhanced accuracy and reducing the risk of collateral damage. Though the military is just now getting around to reinvesting in airships, commercial companies in the U.S. have been making great use of them for decades. Perhaps the most recognizable airship in the world is the Goodyear Blimp. This non-rigid airship was developed by Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company in 1925 as a way for the company to promote its brand and products. Before long, it would be called in to provide aerial coverage of sporting events and parades flying low and slow in order to capture unique images and video of the action.
There are three Goodyear airships in all, each boasting a slightly different look and style. Though they have changed in size over the years, they typically measure around 160 feet long. The construction process of the Goodyear blimp typically involves several stages and can take several months to complete. In 2014, the Goodyear company introduced its newest blimp version, recording its entire construction at the Suffield facility. The process begins with the frame of the airship. This helps ensure the outer shell takes the proper shape. This shell is made of a durable synthetic material called Tedlar. The Tedlar is cut into panels and then sewn together before being placed over the frame. Once secured, the shell can be inflated and the direction fins and other components can be attached. The gondola, which is the enclosed cabin that hangs below the blimp, is typically made from lightweight materials, such as aluminum and composite materials. It is designed to hold the pilot, crew, and passengers, as well as the fuel tanks and other equipment, and is attached firmly to the bottom of the shell. The Goodyear blimp is typically powered by two or three propeller engines, which can be attached to the gondola or the outer shell itself. Once assembled, the shell is covered with a protective coating to help reduce damage from the elements. Finally, the entire thing is painted in blue, yellow, and gray, the standardized color scheme of the Goodyear brand. Even today, the Goodyear blimp continues to travel all around the country, attending Super Bowls and other significant events. Occasionally, VIPs will get a chance to ride in the blimp and take in the sights from low altitudes. There are many differences between flying a traditional aircraft and a blimp, including the lack of turbulence and the steering apparatus which looks like a wheelchair. This is because the mechanics of the blimp use cables and pulleys instead of hydraulics. A traditional yoke wouldn't allow the pilot to move the pulleys enough, so the wheel was installed to keep the pilot from becoming tired during flight. As the world transitions to more cost-effective and environmentally friendly energy initiatives, airships are once again being considered for commercial travel. Perhaps the best example of this is the Airlander. It was introduced in the early 2000s by British company Hybrid Air Vehicles the same contractor who helped the U.S. develop the LMEV. The Airlander is currently the world's largest aircraft, with a length of 92 meters and a width of 43.5 meters. It is also very unique in that it combines all the features of a fixed-wing airplane, a helicopter, and an airship. The airship is being considered for luxury travel with futuristic interiors and accommodations. Though the Airlander's cruise speed is just 92 miles per hour, it can travel for five days straight without needing to come to a stop. The Airlander made its maiden flight in 2016 and has undergone several tests and improvements since then. Although it has not entered commercial service, HAV has received orders for the airliner from various organizations, including the UK's Ministry of Defense and the US Department of Defense. Though there's no telling what the future military and commercial applications will be, 
If any vehicle can reintroduce the age of the airship, the Airlander is the most likely candidate. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.